Okay, thank you all for joining us. Um, we are just hitting the top of the hour, so I'm going to go ahead and get us started. Uh, this is our ProLink HFA webinar series for workflow management. That's the topic for this webinar. This is our second one for the year. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and get us started. And you should be able to see my presentation uh, quickly going over our agenda. We're going to cover general information. That's going to be me covering that information. Then I'm going to hand it off for our business presentation for about 15 minutes. And then we'll finish with our software demonstration for about 25 minutes. I'm Bree Kruder. I'm the executive VP for ProLink Solutions. I'm joined by Ryan Kim, who's our VP of Sales and Marketing, and he's going to be presenting the business. Um, use case for this for this webinar series. And then Sarah Serpernat is our customer success manager, and she's going to be delivering the live demonstration today. Going over some quick general housekeeping and information. If this is your first time attending a webinar with ProLink, um, this is what you can expect in these webinars. The objective of our HFA series is to provide an opportunity for us to capture industry trends, hot topics, and share them um, across our peers and produce a live product demonstration that um, also kind of is married to those subjects. Um, generally, we'll have presenters for, for business-related topics and then also a technical presenter on the webinar. Uh, we have this scheduled for every first Wednesday of the month until October of 2022. Each webinar is about 45 minutes in length, and this is really targeted towards housing agencies nationally. So we have both existing ProLink users and users of ProLink HFA on these webinars. We also have any other agencies that would like to attend joining in. Um, topics vary by month. Each webinar has its own. Today is workflow management for housing agencies, and April will be our quarterly user training. Um, so that's something that we are tying in with our webinar series that I will, I will discuss further at the end of today's webinar. So for those who may not be as familiar with ProLink, um, I do want to just give a brief overview of our company. We've been in business since 1998, I think we were founded, so um, over 20 years now for sure. Our customers really span across the affordable housing industry. We work with state and local housing finance agencies, syndicators, tax credit investors, developers, um, and we provide holistic solutions that support the funding of affordable housing, um, both through, through tax credits and also um, through emergency fund deployment needs. So we have a few products that we offer. Today, we're focused on ProLink HFA, which supports that tax credit origination, bond allocation, asset management, compliance. Um, all of those pieces are wrapped up into ProLink HFA. Our team, we are a group of technologists for sure, um, but also very mission driven. And many of us have, have dedicated our careers to affordable housing. So we know this business. Uh, we live and breathe it every day. We're here to support you. And this really excites us to have an opportunity uh, to create a webinar series like this to meet with our peers, meet with our agencies, both clients and non-clients, and talk about the things that are on your mind um, and, and things that we might be able to help with for sure. Um, here is a list of our clients by products. You can see we have ProLink Plus and HHF listed at the top. That's our emergency fund, fund deployment tool. We have ProLink HFA clients represented in the center, which is the bulk of our clients for sure. Um, it's, a, it's our flagship product. It's where we really started in the affordable housing industry is with ProLink HFA. And then we have our syndicator and investor clients on Pro, ProLink AIM and FHA listed at the bottom. With that, I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Ryan to start the business presentation for the webinar today. Well, thank you, Bree, for the introduction. Um, thank you, everyone, for joining the webinar. We are here to discuss workflow today. Uh, workflow automation, workflow management, business process mapping, workflow tools. These are the phrases we hear a lot today. And it does make sense for all of us as all of us are working more and more in virtual and hybrid environment and where we see each other less and less. 
So this is an example of kind of cartoon workflow diagram. But when you collaborate as a team on a complex business process such as this, it's a challenge in itself. But doing this virtually will be a bigger challenge. So it does make sense for organizations across the economy today, small and large, are all looking into workflows. When you look at workflows, it generally has three steps. The first one is documenting a workflow, meaning reviewing the entire sequence of steps that take to accomplishing one giant task. So documenting a workflow is generally done in a diagram uh, such as this, and it's a way of getting on the same page as a team and understand the current business process in place at the organizational level. And the, the last step in that process is to, once you get on the same page and documented the existing process in place, it's time to propose a change or an improvement. So perhaps consider automating certain portions of the workflow or looking into some new tools on the marketplace. So for next 10 minutes or so, I'll walk you through the process of creating a workflow diagram and um, how to think about proposing a change or an improvement. Then we'll hand over to Sarah to present how the workflow functionality works on Prolink HFA platform. So let's dive right in. Uh, I'm just gonna read the first two sentences for you here. So think about any routine recurring tasks you perform at work, whether it's monthly, quarterly, or annually. And if you can picture in your head each step it takes to get the tasks done, you have a workflow at hand. So a lot of folks, asset managers within asset management department, your tasks tend to be recurring, right? Generally, either quarterly or annual, you collect some data, such as property financial review process, where you're contacting your property managers or owners to collect those audited financials annually or collecting operating financials throughout the year. Uh, if you're in the origina origination side of things, the, it might not uh, exactly tied to timeline, but it could be event-driven. So let's say your developer customers submit the very first funding applications to you, uh, that might be the beginning point of a workflow for you. And the end point of workflow might be uh, approving, making the funding decision on that deal, or even funding the, you know, the funding the deal at the closing, that could be the end of the workflow for you. So going back to property financial review process as an example. Um, as we approach uh, designing, a, designing a workflow diagram for this process, uh, these are the things that probably run through your head as you think about this, uh, this task of collecting financials. So you, you're an asset manager, you manage portfolio of many properties, and let's isolate to one property. You're the person in the yellow circle as an asset manager. You think about what is the name of the property? What is the right contact person for that property to receive the property financials data? And what is the due date you like to impose on this, uh, on this person to submit the data to you? Uh, what is the submission format that you want her to stick to? Uh, do you have certain guidelines? Uh, or is there a standard form you want her to populate? And then you type up a message in the email um, based on all this information and send it to her as a notification. She receives your notification and the process starts where you guys are going back and forth. You might have to send her some reminders along the way, or you might have to clarify some information, or correct her uh, initial data submission maybe. She might have some questions for you. She might be new to the property and she might not you know, be well aware of the standard, you know, format uh, that you might have to stick to. Uh, eventually, she'll submit the final data to you. Through this process, you might be using certain checklists. Maybe it's your personalized checklist that you've been using 
year in, year out. So you're very familiar. You can rely on the checklist. Or it might be a standard checklist that's used by your team or your manager at the asset management department. You'll probably do a status reporting to your team members or your manager about where you stand on all the properties you manage in terms of uh, the status of collecting financials data for that period. And then you are storing that final data that has been submitted in maybe your internal IT infrastructure, or you might be using cloud-based portal. So once you have all these things that you, you think through, and now you are ready to really proactively, intentionally think about designing a workflow diagram. Uh, and when you do that, I want you to think about four components. The first one is people, roles, and resources. And what I like to emphasize here is that you're going beyond yourself, but you're looking at it at a team level, organizational level. In order to accomplish that big task, that workflow, you know, who are all these people uh, going to participate and work together? It could be internal folks within your asset management team. It could be cross-departmental, meaning it could be someone uh, outside your team, but still within the agency. And maybe it's external parties. And in this case, will be property managers, property owners, or even auditors. Steps and actions. So workflow is defined as a sequence of steps or tasks. So think about laying out these individual tasks back to back to back to back and let them flow in one direction. And there will be timeline. Timeline is a critical component as you design workflow diagram, because as you complete all these individual tasks back to back to back, and thus complete the workflow at the end, you wanna make sure you hit certain timeline, certain schedule. And the last thing is the endpoint. Uh, how do you define completion of the workflow? Is it certain deliverables that you're trying to create or is there certain decisions you're making? So you like to define the endpoint of the workflow. So now we're ready to actually design a workflow diagram. And let me just make sure we have all the components included. So we have people, roles and resources represented in swim lanes. So the blue one is the asset management team, which is my team. Orange one is development officer, which is the um, team outside um, within our agency, but outside our team. And then we have a third party represented here, property manager in green. We have a timeline at the bottom. So uh, it, it is artificial, but I um, define quarter end plus five days to be the starting point of this workflow. And then I give myself deadline of quarter end plus 30 days. So after all this uh, task have been performed, at the end of the workflow, I meet this timeline of 30 days after quarter end. Actions and steps, you see it um, in animation. And then at the end of the animation, you see the, uh, the end point of the workflow, which is the final deliverable or final actions that I'm making. So when quarter and plus five days uh, kick in, that triggers the very first action where notification is sent to the property manager. And we give her 10 days in this example to collect and submit the data back to me. And we are keeping it at a high level. Obviously there could be a lot of you know, back and forth, maybe preliminary data submission there could be multiple steps, but I'm keeping it at a high level here. And she submits the data within the timeline. I receive and start reviewing the data and I give myself five days. While I'm reviewing the data, I might check on certain requirements. Uh, cash flow requirements might be certain information I don't have readily access to. So I'll be checking with the development officer on that property. And eventually I approve data and send her the confirmation email. So she feels good and she's, um, you know, she's good to go. And then my final step in this workflow is analyzing the risk 
financial risk of the property by looking at uh, the property's KPIs against certain portfolio benchmark. And also I will look at the historical trending of KPIs on this property. So once you have this workflow generally designed, the next step is looking into how to improve it. The first step is looking at all the tools that you're using today. You are using email, Outlook email. You probably have a cloud-based portal where you uh, receive data from. Uh, you might be actually using Outlook for that, right? Some people will send an email to you with an attachment. Uh, you're using certain checklists such as Excel-based or PDF-based checklist to, so that you can review and approve the data consistently. And then you're reaching into certain database where you have recorded all the requirements about the, you know, based on the funding agreements. And then there's another Outlook email and going back to the database where you have to pull in some historical financial data on this property. So you're reaching into certain database, maybe it's an Excel file for you. So note that there are multiple tools involved in accomplishing this workflow. And note that this represents just one property. So if you're managing 50 properties, it's this times 50. And you wanna consider consolidating these tools. And there are a lot of workflow management tools out there uh, that you can take advantage of. Uh, we at Proling Solutions, we help agencies and the syndicators and investors in affordable housing space on our enterprise platform that includes centralized database and functionality such as workflow. So in a minute, you'll be able to see how pro, uh, workflow functionality works on ProLink HFA platform and Sarah will do the demonstration. But before that, I will just recap the benefits of the workflow. So this is my last slide. It increased visibility. So you make sure nothing falls through the crack. The workflow diagram should be comprehensive. You capture all the components. So not only your own to-do list, but you're looking at it at a, your team's level, your organizational level. Reduce risk. Uh, it ensures all the tasks are done on time once you arrive at the end of the workflow. Introduce a change. It creates an opportunity for all team members to get on the same page, review the process together, and go one step further to make an improvement. Look for opportunities to automate certain portions of the workflow. Consider adopting a platform where you can store all data and leverage functionalities uh, provided by the platform to automate certain portions of the workflow to make the job easier for you and your team. So that's the end of my presentation. And now you'll be able to see how uh, the workflow functionality works on ProLink HFA platform. Sarah, are you ready? Yes, I am ready. Hello, I'm Sarah. I'm one of the customer success managers. I'm gonna show you some informational slides about our workflow. And then after I get done going over and talking about some of the terminology that we use in the system, I'm gonna do more of a demo within the system to show you some more of the options that we have talked about during our slide presentation. So as Ryan has told you, um, there's ways to create your workflow process and do your workflow diagram before you actually set up the data in ProLink HFA. And it is a functionality that will allow you to automate some of your most regular tasks that you would do on a yearly, even a daily basis. Um, our process internally after you've done your diagram is to create the workflow in the application and set up your criteria to trigger the workflow. And then that will send an email um, to spe specified recipients that are part of the deal or the property to take action or reply with information, et cetera. We focus on what we call the associated object criteria. And if you think of that like a screen in ProLink HFA, that makes it a little more grasp graspable for most of the internal users. We do have some agencies who have 
sysadmins that set up workflows for their business users. But once you get the hang of it, business users can set up workflows for themselves um, to kind of automate their processes and make their lives just a little bit easier. So when we talk about associated object going forward, it's going to be like the parent screen. It's kind of an easier way to, to talk about it. And ProLink HFA has seemingly thousands of screens, and all of those are most of those are available to create a workflow. So as I said before, um, the workflow is based on an associated object. So when you, a user would first create the workflow, they have specific fields they would need to fill out. Um, and I have those highlighted here. There are three ways to schedule a workflow once you've decided on the associated object. One of the um, primary use cases I'm gonna show you today is financials, and we'll get to that shortly. So that would be, the associated object that I would select. Event triggered means that um, if you update a record, a field on a record, or you create a record or even delete a record, at that point, that would be the trigger to send the email to the recipients for the workflow to let them know that information has been updated, information is required, or that someone has deleted a record from the system. Recurring is a workflow that will take the specified criteria for the workflow and run that on a scheduled basis, depending on when you decide to run it. You have the options of doing daily, weekly, or monthly, um, frequency, and times. You can set up a workflow to run more than once a day. If you want to run a workflow and alert property managers or owners that their financials are due or they're overdue, you can use a workflow for that. And you could set it up to recur every day to go out and check due dates on financials and verify that those financials had not been received from the property. And a one-time workflow is intended for a single occurrence. I don't think we have many workflows we use um, just once because we do want them repeatable because they're more powerful when you can repeat them and they're recurring. The criteria section um, utilizes the object. So we talked about the associated object would be the parent object. And the object section in the criteria is going to display child or related objects of that parent object. So for financials, for example, um, we have fields there that would be financial wide item, the type of name. Um, and that would be the field that would be selected for the criteria. The operator is the comparison that says, does it contain, is it equal to, is it greater than, is it less than, that comes in handy with dates. So for example, in this particular one, it's indicating that an annual financial has a received date that is empty and the due date is 30 days after today. So that workflow would run, it would look at annual financials with the received date is empty and the due date is 30 days out. That would generate an email to the recipients on the workflow to alert them these are due. And we do something else pretty neat with that when it comes to annual financials that I will show you um, shortly. You can also use and or criteria. There's various operands that you can insert. This criteria, for example, is set up to show for a tax form 8609 that has already been issued meaning the date issued is not empty. If anybody makes any kind of modifications to that particular form, then this would generate an email um, to the, the tax credit officer to let them know that the 8609 has been amended. The template files tab allows you to set up a workflow to automatically associate a document to a record. For example, um, Let's say that you have a dev deal that is ready for underwriting. It's an intake. And once it gets to a certain stage that's set in the system, you want to make sure that this file gets attached to that record in the files hub. And so development officer can go out and download that document and fill it out. That's a blank document. Um, you could add a smart docs if you want to, but it's not going to populate the information automatically that's associated. The user, for those familiar with, with smart docs, would have to do a get first, then populate the data and send it back. But this just automatically alerts the user, hey, we've added this file to this record. You can go out and input this data now. Checklist templates allows you to add a template 
to a property deal, what have you. We have a functionality in Perlink HFA for checklist templates where you create one template of checklist items for asset management, for example, that you know that every single property has to go through and complete during the asset management phase. So when this template is generated based on criteria updated on the portfolio property, for example, um, once you enter total units and you know how many units it's going to have, it will generate this checklist and automatically associate that checklist to the property that it's been triggered on. And you can also, in addition to adding the checklist template, if you wanted to make workflows to notify asset managers that they have items on the checklist that are overdue, you can do that as well. The emails, oh, adding workflow files. Sorry, I was getting ahead of us. I was, I was getting excited about the actual email page. The workflow files page is where you can store some files and manage them. And these are another way to add files to your workflow. Uh, the, the what most people do use this for, if you have a smart docs, what you can do is associate a workflow file to the workflow. For example, here you can see I have the annual financials template and it says perform smart docs get automatically. So what this would do is, for example, you want to send out a workflow to your property manager or your owner 30 days before the annual financials are due. What this is going to do is when the workflow is generated based on that due in 30 days date, it's going to attach the annual financials template to the workflow, send it to the property manager. They can download that file, they can fill it out, and then they can provide it back to the asset manager and you can just send it back up to ProLink, populated with the data the property manager has entered for the financials. Now we're at the email settings tab. The email settings allows you to define the recipients for this particular workflow. It can be a user, any of the users you have, in your ProLink HFA system, they would be listed out by name. If you have property owners, it will allow you to look at a property and select the parent owner to be the recipient of the workflow that you're generating. Or if you have various entities like an accountant or um, a management entity or management agent, it would associate that role to the workflow and would generate the workflow email to those particular recipients. The subject line, can be anything that you want, but the very, very neat thing about our subject line is we can use dynamic fields to call out particular fields and data in those fields. So when the workflow is generated, it's very specific to the record that we're talking about that needs action. For example, financials is gonna put the property name and the fiscal year. If you have a tax credit, 8609 that's been issued, it will refer to the year, it can refer to the tax credit deal name. So the recipient of the email already kind of has a heads up about what's going on based on the data that we can create using dynamic fields in the subject line. The body section, um, this is formatted like a lot of email editors. You can make your font bigger, smaller. Um, for this example, I just copied and pasted my signature line for my email into here. You can add a, a logo or a picture if you would like to. And you also have the option to include the application link. If this is tied to a specific record in the system, it will allow the recipient of the email if they're an internal user to click on that link and be directly taken to the record which they're being alerted about like a, a draw has been approved or 8609 has been issued. You also have the option to use dynamic fields. So when the recipient gets the email, you can see a lot of these dynamic fields in the little kind of gray highlight. That's where you're going to um, see additional information that it has pulled from the associated object record and any associated child records or fields that you have populated in this particular workflow. So we have several use cases, and I'm gonna kind of pop into the system and show you some of these before we go to the other slides. So let me switch on over to our application. So this is kind of where I have some of our workflows. And I know that we did talk about uh, setting them up in a certain way. The first thing you do, and we're not gonna actually create the workflow, I just wanna show you how many 
objects we have in the system to choose from. Pretty much any page, any record that is written to the database is available to select to create a workflow on. Um, anything from name history to loan escrow deposits, um, grant information, my favorite financial line items, um, and all sorts of dev deal information. I know I'm scrolling really fast, I apologize. All the way down to things for TC deals, your construction control inspections, asset management inspections. If, if you can update a screen in Proling HFA, you can create a workflow for it. And this is where you see some of the schedule types. I'm just going to do a quick demo of this part so you can kind of see how you set things up and then you can decide you know your schedule event you have four options a lot of times i just use update but that's what's required now if you've already had your workflow diagram drawn out as per ryan's suggestion during his presentation at that point you can go down and select the criteria and so we have construction control as our associated object but we also have the deal level because that's associated with the construction control record so if we want to do a TC deal, um, do let's say status name contains active, you can do a contains. Now, if you have, uh, you can do an and or an or, TC construction control, construction begin date is within the current year. That would be the criteria to create that particular workflow. And like I said, based on whatever associated object that you have, you have a lot of options to create criteria. So you can make actions in the system that you want to generate a workflow, very, very granular and very, very specific. And the email settings, I can kind of go over and show you, for example, we have assigned users on the deal. So if you have a tax credit officer on the deal that you want to be the recipient, regardless of who the tax credit officer is, whoever has an activity role of that will get that particular, let's go down here. That's gonna send that to whoever your assigned user is for that particular deal in the system. And at that point, you can use dynamic fields a little bit of scrolling that's how you'd have the deal name to whatever you want to add in the subject line and then also same principles apply for dynamic fields in the body and it's going to automatically populate so we've talked about this is how we set up these workflows and things or things that we can do. What do they look like? Um, let me kind of cover this. We talked about annual financials. You can notify a developer manager when a draw is ready. The 8609 is issued or updated. Checklist items are due. Um, if anyone makes changes to a compliance program in the system, that can notify the asset manager that someone's been making updates to the compliance program, whether it be dates or notes that they need to be aware of. If you've completed a tax credit inspection um, in asset management, it's been completed, this will notify the PCO and they can go in and take a look and review the inspection results. Now, this is the one I talked about first. This annual financials workflow has been generated to the property manager 30 days before the due date. So you can see that we have the management name is in this particular email. Um, it's populated the year for which property and the date that it's due. Now, I use the get, or get smart docs on send functionality that we talked about in a previous slide to attach to this email. So when the property manager owner gets this email, they're gonna get this document attached to it and it's already gonna have, hopefully you can see this, it's already gonna have the information for the property, the financial type and the period. 
at this point with this workflow, what would happen is the property manager um, or owner would fill out all the information for the balance sheet, the PL, and the cash flow, any information for the year. They would save this document, they would attach it to Procorum, the Procorum Work Center. And if you look here, we have, um, oh, sorry about that. We have the link to the Procorum Work Center. Um, if you do use Prolink HFA, you know that Procorum is used as an external access for external partners to upload documents and access data since they don't have access to the back office system. So this email would instruct the property manager or owner to fill out that financial documentation upload it to a Procorum Work Center, and then the asset manager can just take that and send all that data right to a Procorum, and it's going to automatically populate the annual financials for that year. So that's a really neat use of workflow and doing smart docs gets when you do that. Another option is if you have a draw and um, someone has entered all the draw information and it was ready to be approved, if you select the ready for approval, on the actual draw, it will generate this email. It will tell you the deal name. And again, this was customized using dynamic fields. So whatever information that you felt was needed in this particular email, you could add it. And um, I'm going to go over here and show you how that works. This is a draw that I've created. And what it's going to do, we've got this data in here and someone's decided it's been received, it's ready for approval, they're going to select ready for approval, they're going to save it. And then I'm bringing up my email so you can see that I get the email. I'll bring it back over here. Oh, and there we go. This is the email that was just generated based on this particular dev deal. And this would take you directly to the deal overview and then the user can navigate to the draw to make the approval. Here's the tax credit workflow generated after updates were made to an 8609 once the 8609 was issued. And I think I showed you in a pre previous slide that you know any field, if you wanted to create a workflow that says basically any field on the 8609 or any other tax form for that matter has been modified since um, it was first entered and issued, you can create a workflow to generate all that information to let you know who changed what, and, and that the form has been amended. The AM checklist workflow, what that did is once this email was generated, and I know I mentioned, hey, it, it, it attaches this automatically to the property, what does that mean? I will show you. When that email is generated, what it's going to do is add whichever checklist you have added to that workflow, it automatically puts it on the property. This one's already been completed, but this is kind of gives you an idea of what checklists look like. And here's one that hasn't been touched. The workflow was generated and it was added. And you can set up your checklist templates to like how many days after this is added to the property or items due. And as you can see, the due dates will be automatically populated. So I think that's all we have to show you today. Um, hopefully that was enough to give you an idea of the robust workflows you can whip up to make your life easier when it comes to handling day-to-day -day tasks and sending out documents um, to be filled out by external partners and how to get those back into the system. Um, we covered ProLink offering three different types of workflows, how to create different workflows based on different fields according to the associated objects, how we can doc add documents and workflow files to the workflows. And the, I, I obviously smart docs being able to do a get and generate that is one of my favorite aspects of workflow because I think it's a really powerful tool to be able to uh, pair a workflow with our smart docs functionality. Checklist templates can also be added as you can see and they will automatically attach to a deal or a property. And the checklist can be updated 
based on the associated object as well. If you want to create a workflow to just go out and look for TC deal checklist or dev deal checklist, you can do that as well. Um, hopefully this has been helpful and informative for you. And if you are a current ProLink HFA user and you want to set up some time um, to dig deeper into some of these workflows, we can do that. Just reach out and let me know. Awesome. Thank you so much, Sarah. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to take back the screen for just a minute to share some information about our future plans for our webinars. So as at the very beginning, I was talking about um, the webinar series the Wednesday, um, one Wednesday per month series for our HFA webinars um, through October. We also support a quarterly training that we offer for our ProLink HFA users. And in the months where those quarterly trainings align with our HFA webinar, we're gonna combine those things and offer them again to all the agencies uh, nationally who would like to participate in that um, event. So. Um, April, July, and October are the scheduled months where we will be offering our quarterly trainings. Um, this will take place instead of that regular monthly webinar, but it will be um, similarly hosted, um, similar time, all of those things. Generally speaking, on those quarterly trainings, we will have ProLink Solutions product managers and customer adoption managers running those sessions. Um, they will occur the first Wednesday again in April, July, and October, um, scheduled for our housing agencies nationally. Um, topics will vary again. So our April training event is going to be focused on compliance very timely with those deadlines coming up. Um, so just keep that in mind as you are scheduling your plan. I think we were going to have a, a link um, shared right now on the webinar for people to go ahead and get scheduled for that upcoming training event. There's going to be more information specifically about the sessions that we'll offer in that training um, through our communications for those who register. So please go ahead and sign up if that is interesting to you and you would like to participate in that. Um, occasionally, I, I do believe as much as we can include industry experts um, within our network to provide insights into the subjects that we plan for our quarterly trainings, we're going to do that. So uh, we look forward to providing more information as we get closer to those dates and throughout the year offering opportunities for us all to learn from others outside of ProLink as well um, as those opportunities arise. So if you have any suggestions for us, any wants or desires in, in future events, webinars, quarterly trainings, please bring those to us. We love that feedback. Um, as always, please, you know, QA, chat, all of those things are available to you. I already see some notices from people who are chatting. Um, looks like that link has been posted and then questions as well. Um, we will be issuing the recording for this session will be provided after um, we end today and we will follow up with all questions answered with that follow up um, of the recording to everyone who attended today. So Thank you very much for your time. We really appreciate it. Um, my name is, again, is Brie Cruder, and you can contact me with the information below if you would like to schedule um, additional training or if you would like to talk about ProLink HFA for your agency, I'd be happy to do that with you. And we look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.